Hey guys, Benny Johnson from Johnson Brothers Marine Services. Just taken over Enterprise Marine recently and we're fortunate enough to pick up the old Flycraft mould um, along the way. Basically from learning the pros and cons of these boats and being lucky enough to fit out the captain's boat, we've made some serious mods to it to make it the perfect fishing boat. So why is 445 so iconic? It punches well above its weight. For a boat that's only 4.45 metres, the space in it, what it can do out in rough sea or through chop, it'll punch through anything. You can put a 40 horsepower on it any day of the week and it's going to do you fine. Or you can go fucking mad like myself and go the 115. Not always recommended, but uh, why not? You can never have too much power. Another thing is, easy to handle by yourself but you can also take a few guys out fishing with you or just go out for the day recre recreationally. So it's the perfect all round boat. As for the aesthetics of the, of the 445, the curves, the lines, everything about them, the freeboard they've got for the size boat, it, it just makes them the all round perfect boat and a great looking boat. Especially once you start mixing up the colors, you can go like the captain's boat and go the original colors or you can mix it up and go whatever crazy colour you want to go for. Since I got my hands on the Flycraft mould, I've made a lot of changes to the boat. But from the gunnel down, nothing's changed. You know, the old saying, if it's not broken, why fix it? With the new mould, you're probably asking what changes have I made? We're now running a 25 inch transom to raise that engine up out of the water. So by raising it up 25 inch, we gained a few things by doing that got the engine out of the water, it gave us more room for a live bait tank down the back, and then also just the top deck itself. We've made it a lot, a, a lot more rounder to once again improve on those aesthetics of, of the boat. But some of the other changes I've made just to the construction of the actual hull itself is there is no more timber. It is thermalite, but the only thermalite we have got in this boat is in the transom. The rest of the boat is constructed of solid glass. We're running U-shaped box section as stringers, which does a couple of things. It also, it gives us a uh, bigger surface area to stick the floor down onto, but it's also glassed in solid. So a couple of things, it'll never rot. It's there forever. There's no more rebuilding of the Hanes. This thing's gonna outlast you. And the other thing is by doing this, it is so strong, it's, it's gonna break you before you break it. Uh, behind me here, we've got my own demo boat of the Johnson Bros 445 Mark II. Basically, I've kitted this one out with, with the 115 Pro XS. Overkill, yes, but fun, yes. If you think of it, it's got it. It's got the Simrad Go 12 as your main display. On the front of the console, I've mounted the Sim, Simrad Evo 9. Um, we're running a dual transducer, one through hole, and then the three in one active imaging on the back. We've also got the motor guide on the front. I'm running the uh, wireless phone charger, which is also running a uh, vessel view mobile link to the engine. So I'm using my mobile as the gauge for the, for the engine, but I engine is also integrated with the Simrad. So it's up to you, but it's nice to have a phone being charged while you're out there. It's got a full autopilot system integrated with the Simrad. Motor guide integrated with the Simrad. I'm running a GME stereo in it um, and GME VHF in it also. So price point of these boats. Base package, get going, very basic electronics, nothing too out of the way. On a trailer, turnkey go with a 60 CT Mercury for 52 grand. From where you go from there, it's entirely up to you. It's only money. So people ask me, is the 60 horsepower enough for one of these boats? Our last boat we fitted with the 60 horsepower Command Thrust Mercury uh, outboard. Now, it runs a bigger gearbox, higher thrust, and basically the owner is as happy as Larry with it. Uh, he takes two to three guys out with him, um, all by himself, planes easily, still got a top speed of 32 knots, and cruising, cruising around, 22 to 24 knots and he's running on the smell of an oily rag. Uh, these boats come standard with a 100 litre tank so 60, I don't know if he wants to go to New Zealand or not but he's, he's going to get pretty close. 
Okay, so today we're out in Pibwater, guys. We just came for a little bit of a rest stop here on Portuguese Beach. And um, lucky enough to have Jack coming along uh, from the captain. He's bought the nub tub. So it's, we've done a few comparisons. We're gonna do a few more, including a little bit of a race, which I'm pretty excited about. I'm a bit of a winning sort of guy and I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. All right, so when we got the call from Benny Johnson that he wanted us to come bring our nub tub out on pit water and compare it to his new Johnson Brothers 445F Mark II, to be honest, I was a little bit worried for Ben because that right there is probably one of the most perfect 445s I've ever been on. I was a little bit skeptical of this new rig, but super excited to jump on board. And today we've been out, had awesome fun playing with this new toy, jumping off some waves, and just gonna run you through my first impressions. So the first thing that caught my eye on Benny's new 445 was the motor guide mount. Now, this shape is not an easy shape. It's quite contoured and curvy. So to get a mount that holds a motor guide is awesome. I would love one of those on our boat. Another super cool addition, which I've actually never seen on any boats before, are these nav lights. And you're probably wondering, which nav lights? The nav lights are actually inside the rubbing strip here. Now this is so much better than having them mounted on top of the console because when I turn them on at night, you get a lot of reflections from the inside of the hull back on your face. So having these here is, is so cool, such a nice touch. Now moving down towards the cockpit here, uh, it is a lot more functional than our nub tub. These side pockets are one big piece. There's no barriers here, everything flows straight through and it has tow rails, big tow rails. I can get my feet right under this and it actually dips down at the end so you can fully lock yourself in, which you wouldn't think about it, you wouldn't think it, but it actually gives you so much more deck space and so much more fishing room back here. That is something our boat is really missing. Another really nice touch is this, this little bench seat that Benny's put in. It has an esky which goes underneath it, which gives you a little bit of storage or sort of for drinks, whatever you like. But when we're out in the nub tub and in full day's fishing without any seat, it's a killer and your lower back is just dead by the end of the day. So having this here is a really nice touch. I know some people would prefer to have it completely clean, but I must be getting old now that I'm over 30. This is, this is very nice. Benny's also gone to great lengths to make this thing sort of as versatile as possible. And he's put these rail blazer strips sort of on all the flat surfaces, which can, which can be used to do a whole range of things, whether that's sort of drink holders, additional rod holders, you can even put a bait board into these racks as well and sort of just fit up the boat to how you're going to be using it on the day, which is a really nice touch. I, I love that for this. Now in the electronics department, uh, Benny's opted for a Simrad fit out. He's got a 12 inch here up on the dash and a nine up here on the front of the console. Pretty nice touch having the, the second display. I am a little bit jealous of that. Now one thing I would change about this boat is the console height. Now I'm six foot one um, and I'm really leaning down to get to that throttle. The steering wheel's not in a great spot and I can't even really sort of see the display too well. But it's all personal preference with this boat. Everything the guys do is customised to what you want. This is Ben's actual boat, this is his test boat, and he's a lot shorter than me, so this height works well for him. The new boats, we've redone the console, we've raised it up, and we've actually now fitted a wave breaker to the console. All right, another thing I would change on this boat, and this is, again, personal preference, but there's no casting platform in this boat. Having the casting platform on the nub tub is so good for storage. We keep safety gear in there, we keep all our water, life jackets, everything, and it just keeps it off the deck. Having no casting platform on this boat is nice being able to come up to the front, but it's just a, it's just a killer on the storage front. And if this was my boat, I'd definitely be opting for casting platform. Now I've had an awesome day today testing out these two boats. Uh, I had to put my tail between my legs a little bit because we got smoked on the race. This thing can go 49.8 knots and getting about 39 out of that. So we got smoked. So Benny was very, very happy to beat us on the horsepower front. Um, but after being in this boat, what it really made me realize, you'd be mad to attempt a rebuild when you can get one of these for as little as 50 grand. Our boat's insured for 80 grand and five years worth of labor and hardship went into that. When you could just rock up, pay 50K, walk away one of, with one of these, you'd be crazy to ever attempt to rebuild. Um, now this boat, obviously, it's a bit of a showpiece, so it's actually worth quite similar to a, the, what the nub tub is over there. And Benny's just done that to, you know, give it a bit of flair. But as I said, 
every day of the week you, you're buying one of these over a rebuild.